Hello, thanks for tuning in. On this uh, tutorial, we're talking about strobe tips for shooting macro. Now, I have an SLR here, but if you have a compact or point and shoot camera, that applies as well. With macro photography, we need generally to have a strobe. We're very close. Uh, in order to illuminate the subject, we need to have the shutter speed would be too long without a strobe and you'd get movement the object the camera movement you'd have a blurred image plus there's very poor depth of field with macro we generally need a strobe for macro photography now the good thing about macro photography you don't have to deal with illuminating the background and foreground because the strobe illuminates pretty much everything so we usually have a a high shutter speed all right that stops the action we want to sync it to the strobe usually about 1 to 250 or 1 to 200 something like that we have a low ISO setting since the strobe is illuminating everything and we have enough power in our strobes we want to keep the ISO setting at the lowest possible that results in the highest quality and not a lot of grain or noise okay we also adjust our aperture for artistic effect aperture is the size of the diameter of the opening so we want to have if we want we generally have a smaller aperture to have a little bit better depth of field so that we can focus on more than just one little layer sometimes however we'll open the aperture and reduce the depth of field for instance if we have a distracting background or we just want to focus on the eye or let a certain part of the subject kind of pop out so we adjust the shutter speed with the shutter speed we keep quick the iso setting low the aperture we adjust for artistic effect and what do we do to get the proper lighting we adjust the strobe we have three factors the strobe power the strobe distance from the strobe to the subject and the position the angle are we going to have direct or edge lighting and we check our histograms for that and we showed some examples of how to use and interpret the histogram in the last tutorial Okay, let me just show a few examples now of how we position our strobe. This is a standard positioning I will have when shooting macro. Okay, so here's that position I just showed you, and here's our imaginary subject. Uh, by pointing the strobe like this, we're illuminating, we're catching the edge of the cone of light, we're catching the subject and illuminating the subject, but we're not illuminating the intervening water column. That minimizes backscatter and other stuff in the water column. All right, so that's a very common strobe position, whether you have one or two. I generally shoot one strobe with macro. If you have two, you can still keep them in a similar position on either side of the camera. And this is just a, a shot showing the uh, front side. All right, uh, so here's a shot, an example of a, a butterfly fish taken in Hawaii with the, using that strobe position. There was some backscatter, but I caught the butterfly fish with the edge of the cone of light, and I didn't really in, you know, illuminate the intervening water column. All right. Uh, now, if you're going to do super macro or real close, like you see here, well, obviously, if I had the strobe up here, it would miss the cone of light would miss it altogether. So then you have to pull your strobe in tighter, bring your strobe down closer to the lens, and even point it at the subject. Now you might be illuminating a little water column, but you know what? There's not much water column there. You're so darn close to the subject. All right, and you can still check your histogram. So here's a front view of that strobe position. Uh, that's a picture of the eye of a scorpion fish using a, a 60 millimeter macro lens and a plus 10 diopter added over it with my strobe right almost touching the dome port. Of course, you have to have a cooperative subject for that too. And here's the last strobe positioning that Martin Edge talks about in his wonderful underwater photography book. I have not generally had as much luck with this, but Martin Edge will sometimes take the strobe and put it above the camera and have it go right down on the camera. Now you're not, uh, you are illuminating the intervening space between the camera and the subject, but you're eliminating a distracting background. I generally try to find a non-distracting background like beautiful open water, you know, part of the composition, but if you can't find that you can point the strobe down and take a few pictures so that the edge of the cone of light is just catching the subject and not illuminating the crappy background and here is one example where I was successfully able to use this technique this was a yellow line arrow crab with a quite distracting background but by just catching the arrow crab and not illuminating the background it kind of pops out and it's a relatively pleasing picture all right, so this concludes strobe positioning tips for macro. The next one will be strobe positioning tips for wide angle. Thanks for tuning in.